Hi, it's Clark from Temptress. Today in our Enough is Enough series, we're going to use uh, some brokerage tools to help us choose an investment. As you know, in this series, we talk about five different things. We talk about defining your own enough. We talk about basic understanding of the market. It can be any way of investing your money, but that's what I know, so that's what I'm going to talk about. We talk about habits and motivations that help us uh, do this successfully. We're going to talk about the nuts and bolts of how to actually do the stuff. And we're going to talk about how we can build a sense of community to help us through the whole thing. Today, we're going to talk about choosing an investment that's uh, right for us using the tools our broker gives us. In another video, we're going to talk about how the market works, kind of in a theory way, all of the terms. So I got to talk about just a few points. What are we buying that's going to make us retire? We all know the market. We've seen it in movies. We know it's something that gets money back to us. This is what it does. Stock market lets us buy part of publicly traded companies. We can actually, as individual people, own a bit of like Coca-Cola or whatever. And when they make profits, they pay the profits to us. We actually own the company. We own a minute part of it, but they're a huge company. It's significant. The more we own, the more we get. Now, if you bought just Coca-Cola and all of a sudden everybody decided that it's not very healthy to drink Coca-Cola and they couldn't sell the stuff, you're in trouble. Um, it kind of happens when you buy any of one company. If they do really well, you do really well. But when they do poorly, you could have a loss. And if they go out of business, you just lose it all. So what we like to do is diversify. That's the word that's used. We like to buy a lot, a lot of different uh, companies, just a tiny bit of each one. That would be a pain in the butt. To run around and find the companies you want to be in, buying thousands or hundreds of different stocks, selling them when they aren't doing so well. That's what people do. That's what brokerage do. But geez, that's no way to live a life. So my philosophy is, I want to put my money into something called uh, a fund. And there's a couple different kinds of funds. And the short of a fund is we all buy part of the fund. The fund owns uh, all of these different stocks and that instantly diversifies us. We buy one thing and we're done. Um, so the trick is choosing that one thing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How to choose the fund that's right for you. So if we want to diversify, we need to buy a product that does this for us. And there's two that come to mind. Um, there's ETFs, they're relatively new. Uh, they're cool in their own way. And then there's the been around forever mutual fund. Uh, so the difference in them, well, an ETF, it's like a stock of stocks and it works just the same way. If you want to buy it, you have to pay a brokerage fee as you buy it. If you want to sell it, you're going to pay a brokerage fee. when you sell it, you can, um, Buy and sell it anytime you want though. If you wanted to buy a whole bunch of it and uh, saw that the market went way up by lunchtime and you say sell it, that sell happens when you say you want it to happen. That's kind of good if you want to like play short. But I play long, so it means nothing to me. The mutual fund works a little differently. You can't buy it on a minute to minute basis. When you put in an order, that order happens at the end of the day. And basically you get either the worst or the best price of the day. So they're really for people that want to buy and hold for a period of time. But one day's winnings and earnings mean nothing over the period of a year. It's, uh, it's a perfectly acceptable uh, issue. The other thing you need to know about mutual funds is what it costs to buy and sell them. Uh, there's something called a load. So it's kind of the same thing as a brokerage fee. A fund will have a, a, may have a load. It may have a front-end load or a back-end load. If it's a front-end load, it costs money to buy the fund. And if there's a back-end load, it costs money to sell the fund. It's possible for it to have both, but it's also possible to be a no-load fund. And uh, I'm in a no-load fund. I like it. I can buy it and sell it any time. There's always, you know, small print. The shorter the small print for the one I'm in is you have to hold it for six months or they charge you a load. But since I buy and hold, it doesn't matter. All of these funds are you owning something that is a collection of other stocks for other companies. Now, they don't just buy them and, and let it sit there. There's some choice made. If a company starts going bad, 
it gets kicked out. If a company starts doing really good, you get more of it. So that's called the uh, management of the fund. And a fund can be actively managed or passively managed. An actively managed fund is like a, a rock star that's watching this, all the stock market. He's like the guy out of the old movies. And he's buying a little of this and selling a little of that and doing all the work. But he considers himself a rock star and he demands a lot of money for his efforts. So those funds tend to be very expensive. That The expense is like how much the fund is charging every year just to hold it. You're basically paying his salary or that whole department's salary. A passively managed fund is the opposite. They tend to be much cheaper. And a passively managed fund is either just a collection of stocks and that's what it is or a collection of bonds and that's what it is. Or there's a special subversion of that that's an index fund. And an, I like index funds. What an index fund is, they find some index out there. I like the S&P 500. They buy whatever the S&P and S&P, you can look it up, it's just a, a, a group that uh, defines the biggest companies and the best profitable companies in the world. So they buy whatever the S&P tells them to buy. And when the S&P changes their recommendation, they change their recommendation. Now you're paying the salary of a computer. It's really cheap. Many of the index funds take less than a tenth of a percent a year, some much less. So when I'm looking for a product, I look for a couple things. I like the passively uh, managed funds. I like them because they're low expense, so low expense is important to me. I look for something that has diversification. I like something that is tied to a big index because I actually trust the guys that are doing the index more than I trust the managers. And um, I've been riding that way for a long time and it's worked out. So that's really all I can say to recommend it. Like all of my recommendations, you're a fool if you listen to me. I am not a professional. I've just managed my own money for the last 25, 30 years. Um, you really should look into this more deeply than just doing what Clark says. But this is what Clark says. So let's go into the computer now and take a look. I'm going to Schwab because that's what I know. And I, I know their tools. But like I have always said, you can use any brokerage you want to. Doesn't matter. They're all going to have something like this. Heck, if they don't have something like this, that's when you change brokers. So we're on the Schwab screen. I'm going to log in and go to the research page. If you weren't already there, you click here. It takes you to the research page. And we're going to go to the uh, mutual funds page. Uh, uh, there's a tool we're going to use, a couple tools we're going to look at, and it happens to reside there as well as some other places. Anyway, what we're looking for is the fund finder to start with, and then later on we're going to look at the fund compare tool. Uh, you'll always be able to find these on the site, but you know websites are. Things move. Okay, here's Schwab's fund finder. Uh, we get to put in some choice uh, criteria to help us weed down these thousands of offerings available. First thing is management style. We talked about that a bit, whether it's passively or actively managed. I truly prefer the passively managed, but in this search we're going to uh, look at the actual cost and that basically weeds it right down for us. You know, if someone actively managed it for nothing, maybe we'd take their offering. Next thing's product types. Let's tell it we would like to look at both of the ones we're interested in today. Uh, I skip this. The next thing is this uh, Morningstar rating. There's an outfit called Morningstar and they've uh, come up with a rating system that is the ratio of the return that the investment's giving to the amount of risk. And they give uh, the, the one star to things that are risky as all hell and aren't doing very well. And they give the five stars to things with the opposite ratio. That's what we want. Things that are doing pretty well but aren't terribly risky. And I'd like to look at just the fours and fives today, I'm going to say. So there we go. The last uh, criteria over here is this asset class. Think of this as the personality of the fund. Um, it's kind of like if it's all into bonds or if it's all into stocks. It it's, um, gives you a feeling of what it has going for it, what the philosophy of the guy that's, that made the choice is. And it goes on and on and on and on. Um, there's all kinds of different kinds of funds. I'm not going to be choosing any of those now because I'm going to use different criteria. So. 
we have 2,437 uh, funds to products to look at. I hope you're ready for all, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to now do some more sorting. And the next thing I'm going to sort on is I'm going to take the whole list and I'm just going to sort it on the expense ratio. I am really big into not paying a lot of money to have somebody else make all kinds of decisions, especially when the track record isn't really all that great. So pop this button and it sorted the cheapest fund in the land down to the most expensive one. Just that's all I'm going to do to start with. And then I'm going to look down the, this column. This is in the last five years, how much has this returned per year? So like this one returned 10.5% uh, per year, over five years. Hey, that's pretty cool. I'll look down this list a little bit, just see if anything pops out. Oh, look at this one. Uh, it's still way at the top of the list. It doesn't cost much at all in expense. And it's 12.10% uh, return per year. It's called SCHG. I'm going to put this over here to the side, and we'll get to that in a minute. I put it up in a different tab. The other reason I chose that one is, in all honesty, to make myself look good. Um, it did come up with that good number, but uh, actually I should say Emily looked good. This is what Emily's money is chiefly in. She chose this one a couple years ago, and it's been doing very well for her. And uh, we're not talking about it because we're trying to say you should buy it. We're talking about it because it's what we know about so that we can talk about it. You should do your own choosing. But let's keep choosing. That was an ETF. If we go through all of its details, we'd find that it's an ETF. I'm going to now turn those off because I want to have one of each. So now we're going to look at mutual funds. Same criteria. We've got the mutual funds here being sorted by their gross expenses. I'm going to go down the, the five-year column. And I'm going to go down here a little ways. And why am I choosing this one? Well, 20 years ago, this is what I started buying. <laughs> so it's still doing very well. I'm very happy with it. Might not look like it jumps right to the top of the list, but again, it's what I know about. So let's go into their details just a little bit. But before they, we do that, we're going to go back and choose that other tool, and we're going to compare the two of these. Okay, this is the fund compare tool. It's it lets us type in the name of funds and uh, and just see them all on the same screen side by side. So. The ETF was SCHG, yep, that's the right one, and the, the mutual is SNXFX. So here we go. They're now up here right side by side so we can compare them. The fund type, yes, that's an ETF, and that one's a mutual fund. The availability, the mutual fund is open for investment. I happen to know that one is because Emily invests in it actively. Uh, this tells you the total assets. I'm not going to go through every field here, but you can see that they're in the billions, which means billions of dollars are, are in. They're not fly by night. You know, lots of people are involved in this. Here's a little deal on their strategy. Um, you go on down uh, somewhere in here. Yep, there it is. This is the distribution yield. I like that because uh, the fund I'm in uh, pays me a bit of distribution, and we'll go into what distribution is over growth in the other video. Just too much for now. Uh, now let's just take a quick peek right into detail. This is their detail screen. Uh, this is the one for SCHG. This is the ETF, of course. Uh, they look a little different because they're different types of accounts, but they have all basically the same information in it. This is the SNX FX. Okay. So let's take a quick look at what just comes up on the main screen. On the performance tab, And there's a lot of tabs and a lot of information. Don't let this snow you. There is way more here that I understand. I am not an expert at this. If you find anybody that knows absolutely every field and what they mean, what you found is a liar because there's just so much. There's just so many ways of looking at these. You just have to look at it enough that you decide it's OK. Think about buying a CD player. You don't have to know the sampling rate and everything else. If we still use CDs today, you just know it had to sound good. You, you knew, know it has to do what you want it to do. And uh, that's all we're going to really have to dive into, in my opinion. So here it is. Um, one thing I like to look at here for an index fund is comparing it to the index. And uh, this guy would be the dark blue mark. And uh, the index that it's following is the Dow Jones here, or a, a good one to be following. 
And since you can't even see the dark line until you get way up to this uh, last end, you can see that it's following the Dow Jones pretty darn closely. And that's what we want in an index fund. Uh, this is what it did over the last uh, 10 years. If I pop in on it, it, I get to see what it did over the last year. And I can see that, uh, well, it's what the market did. The market was going really good up till about September, October. It dove down a bit, and now it's recovering. It's, you can't expect it to do better than the market. If you look at it over 10 years, you can see there's a good, slow, steady growth on the average. There's days when you'd have been, be unhappy, but then there's days when you'd be happy. That's just how the market goes. It's the long average that matters. Let's take a quick look at the mutual fund. Here's the mutual fund. All the same information is there. You can dive down into it. I want to show one in particular. The summary on the mutual fund. Not all mutual funds do have this feature. And uh, this is an important feature in my personal opinion. And it's right here under fund highlights. It's probably six other places too. Low investment minimums and no loads. Well, the investment minimum for this mutual fund, sometimes these can be high, is a dollar. So you can buy it and you can get into it for a dollar. And no loads. This is a mutual fund that costs you nothing to get into and nothing to get out of. This is one of the main reasons I went with this one. Also, it's paying very well. So uh, I look for that personally in a mutual fund. Let's look at one other part here. Um, again, this is the SNX FX, the mutual fund. Uh, at the beginning of the period, one year ago, if you put in $10,000, this tells you what you would have at the end. So if a year ago today I was invested $10,000 in SNX FX, today I would have $10,500. And that wasn't a particularly great year. Go to 10 years. If I put $10,000 in it, I would have, oh, I don't know, that looks like about $50,000. This is why we invest in the market. Imagine if you bought a, you could choose between two cars. You bought a car or you could buy another car that cost $10,000 more. The $10,000 more car might make you happier. But if you took that $10,000 and you put it into this account, 10 years later when you're thinking about selling that car, how much happier were you during that time? Were you $50,000 happier? <laughs> That's why we invest in the market. Okay. Well, as you can see, there's a lot of information out there. There's some tools that make it a bit easier. It's a little daunting, but if you decide what criteria are important to you and you just search on those criteria, it's all there. As I'll explain in the big video about how the stock market works, or at least my opinion on it, you'll see that generally all of them that follow the, the economic trends of the world, you're going to win because it's growing. Thanks again for watching. If you have comments or questions, that's what the comment section's about. We can all help each other. I really appreciate it if you push the like button. It lets other people know this was worth watching if you think it is. Push the subscribe button if you haven't already. And right beside the subscribe button, there's this bell. Click that and you'll know when the next video comes out. If you want to learn more about all this, uh, take a look at the description. We're going to have lots of links to different things there. In particular, there's a community link. If you click on that and do a survey, uh, we'll hold your information and uh, we'll put you in touch with other people in your area that you know, think the same way. We already have 100 people from all over the world and we're thinking about putting the information out real soon. Thanks again, this is Clark and I'll see you next time.